learning, training, and education are probably the most important factors that determine success and happiness in life. Whether it's ordinary education, reading, writing, arithmetic, and all of that, or highly advanced training in some science or engineering discipline, or training in enlightenment and self-realization. The ordinary educational system has let us down. It doesn't teach skills. It only teaches how to give right answers on tests. So you wind up graduating from school only knowing how to get through school. And then you hit the real world, and it's another story. What is needed to rise above the current crisis in education, in leadership, in trust, and in self-realization, is a new kind of education, not ordinary schooling, but experiential learning that teaches real skills. We cannot master a subject without doing it. And we cannot do the subject without being it. That's where our Western philosophy has let us down. Descartes' idea of, I think, therefore I am, is completely backwards. The Cartesian split between the mind and the body, between knowledge and action, is completely wrong. Why? Because real learning starts from being. We went over this in the previous videos in the Foundation series, and we're going to go into it much deeper in this series of Becoming Genius. Because no one is born a genius, or you might say everyone is born a potential genius. Well, why do some people realize it and others don't? It's simply because they are not becoming a genius. And becoming a genius, I'm not going to say it's easy. You have to know how. But once you know how, it's simply a matter of methodical application of certain principles. And we're going to go into those principles deeply in this series. If one wants to become a doctor, you have to enroll in medical school. You have to go through a lot of book learning. And then you have to go through a lot of practical learning. Finally, you have to be approved, evaluated, and stamped a doctor by a panel of judges, all of whom are practicing physicians themselves. The same is true of enlightenment. You can study about enlightenment from books or websites, but unless you actually practice and become an enlightened person, you will not attain what you're looking for. This series of videos is how to become a genius in any field that you choose. Of course, we would rather that you become a genius in skillful living and realize the teaching of the Buddha, because that will give you the greatest benefit. So what is skillful living and what is becoming a genius? Well, let's talk about it some more. So in other words, it's very hard for us to learn new skills because our idea of learning itself is backwards. Let's go over the theory again. Being and becoming. Becoming is the process of changing your being. Now, how important is being in learning and life in general? Most people think that having is the important thing. If I have something, then I can do something with it, and then I can think about it, and then I can know something, and then maybe being is in there someplace down near the bottom. But that's not the way it really is. The way it really is is that being is fundamental. If you have the being of, let's say, an artist, then you automatically know how to express yourself and you can think in terms of your artistic media and disciplines and so on, and then you can easily do your art, and then you can have the things that come from doing your art. Or if you're 
interested in leadership by having the being of a leader automatically the doing and having and so forth of a leader will come to you and with regard to enlightenment if you can synthesize the being of an enlightened person then automatically all the rest will be added to you in other words being is senior to everything else change your being and you change your life if you want to change your life if you want to learn something or become something then you have to change your being and of course the problem is we haven't been taught about being we ha we don't understand much about becoming these are foreign words to us because our educational system has buried topics having to do with ontology ontics phenomenology experiential learning and so on they have put them away where we can't get at them where we have no access to them where we don't have the vocabulary to even approach them and mainly they have been relegated to the graduate and postgraduate levels of education so very few people get that far therefore very few people know about issues concerning being what to speak of becoming becoming is very esoteric really it's only covered nicely in the teaching of the buddha that's why we source everything from the suttas the theravada suttas which are the original teachings the original sermons actually of the buddha to his monks now what is becoming the dictionary defines becoming as a verb meaning begin to be grow to be turn into of a person qualify or be accepted as acquire the status of and the example they give is she wanted to become a doctor well again if you want to become a doctor you have to go through the process of becoming a doctor it's not easy it takes a lot of work anything in life worth doing is worth doing well and anything in life that's worth doing well is worth becoming a genius at becoming a real expert at it and we'll define genius in a moment but for now try to understand that anything worth doing in life is going to be a struggle it's going to be a lot of work it's going to require a very strong commitment and intense amount of labor and attention from you so we're talking about becoming okay becoming is a necessary thing for learning but how do we become the buddha tells us he defines becoming as follows kama is the field consciousness the seed craving the moisture the consciousness of living beings is tuned to a refined property thus there is the production of renewed becoming in the future this is how there is becoming so the buddha as usual <laughs> gives us a deeper view of becoming than the dictionary he tells us how there is becoming by tuning the consciousness to a refined quality if you understood this statement it's like e equals mc squared if you understood e equals mc squared you could go into the lab and cook up an atomic bomb uh -huh. well if you understand this statement the consciousness of living beings is tuned to a refined quality you could become anything that you would like to become in this world or beyond it this is the secret and we're going to be explaining this secret elaborately in this video and the ones following now let's take a look at genius everybody knows the perfect example of genius albert einstein albert einstein was already a genius by the time he was 16 he was already doing original work in a very very esoteric field of nuclear physics how did he get like that was he born that way some people might want you to think so but i disagree i was also doing advanced work in physics at the age of 16. in fact i was offered a full scholarship to mit in nuclear physics which i turned down <laughs> But why did I get that scholarship? Why did I get perfect scores in all my college board examinations? 
I looked into this because people ask me, my disciples especially, my students, ask me, how is it that you know all these things? How is it you can do all these things? I can fly a light plane. I can swim and run. Uh, I was a really uh, highly trained yogi and other athletics. And I did so many things in my life that most people don't even start to do. I was an expert symphonic flautist. I was an expert jazz composer and so many other things. I wrote dozens of books and so on and so on. How did I do that? Well, when people started asking me, I gave it some thought. How did I do that? And the result is what you're getting in this series, how to become a genius. Becoming a genius is something you do. It's not something you are in the beginning. You have to cultivate it. You have to work to get it. But luckily, there is a method that you can follow. It's not easy. It will take a lot of work. And a lot of that will be dry, plodding, methodical work. But if you follow this method, I guarantee you, you can become a genius at whatever you want to do. So what is a genius? Well, again, the dictionary defines genius as a noun, meaning exceptional intellectual or creative power or other natural ability. A person who is exceptionally intelligent or creative, either generally or in some particular respect. And the example they give, a musical genius. Well, I disagree with this definition because it says other natural ability. But I don't think the abilities of a genius are natural. I think the ability of genius is cultivated. And it's cultivated in a very specific way having to do with the meaning of terms. And we'll get into that when we describe the four levels or four steps of the process of becoming genius. Now, we can define becoming genius as follows. Becoming genius utilizes concepts derived from the teaching of the Buddha and other spiritual disciplines, as well as advanced concepts in science, education, ontology, semantics, software, and systems theory to master any subject so thoroughly that it results in a permanent change in being, so that whatever you master becomes your spontaneous, natural self-expression. Now this is the natural part about being genius. By the time you become the master of a particular subject or activity, it is natural to you to act as a master in that field. You don't have to think about it. Huh? There's no planning, thinking, calculating, scheming. You don't need to take a break and say, okay, what am I going to do now? It arises spontaneously from your being. That's the whole point of becoming genius. So when we say a genius is someone who has achieved mastery in a particular field, what do we mean exactly? Well, the meaning of mastery is far more than mere mechanical or technical proficiency. When you master something, it becomes your being, who you are, your natural self-expression, not something you merely know about. Whatever you master becomes effortless to use. You don't need to remember and apply it. It becomes your natural, spontaneous self-expression without thinking or calculation. This level of mastery comes from our unique ontological model and experiential methodology. The model of being and becoming used in our course is derived from the Buddha's theory of dependent origination, Paticca Samuppada. And we're going to go into this in detail in our upcoming videos. You will learn how to use dependent origination to become whatever it is that you want to be. And if you want to master a particular field, how to become a master of that field. And if you attain that, then that field is completely open to you. Whatever you want to do, you can do at the highest level. We mentioned experiential learning. Well, what is experiential learning? Becoming genius will not be easy. 
because we will critically question your habitual ways of learning and point out what is holding you back. You need full participation to get the promise of becoming genius. You have to make it part of your experience. So in other words, when we read something to you or when we say something to you in these videos, you should view this video over and over again, by the way. And each time we introduce a new concept, you should stop the video, look into yourself and recall a time when you experienced something like that in your life. Or if you never have experienced something like that, you need to identify that too. If this is a completely new concept that has no equivalent in your experience, then you should be very attentive to it because this is something beyond your previous level of being. We offer a radically different approach to learning. To get the full value of this, you must discover for yourself the experience of what we present. The experiential method is designed to provoke you to transform yourself into the genius you potentially can be. In other words, I can't do it to you. You have to do it to yourself. You have to work out these ideas in your experience. And the primary thing that's holding you back is that you don't know the definitions of the terms that we're using to describe our method. And we'll go over this in great detail coming up in the videos. Finally, experiential learning is not merely knowing about a subject, but transforming your being into a master of the subject, a genius. What am I doing when I'm trying to communicate with you? I have an idea or a memory or an experience or a state of consciousness or some information that I want to get across to you. And I want to have a copy of the information in my head wind up in your head. How do we do that? We take a language that we both understand and I encode my thoughts into the language. The language is not the same as the thought. It's a code. When I say dog, everyone thinks of a dog, four-footed furry animal, and all the qualities of a dog and so on. Why? Is the word dog equivalent to a dog? No. Although you have been taught that in school. If, if somebody asks, what's a four-footed uh, furry beast of the best friend of mankind? Oh, D-O-G, and you write that in on your test, then you get approval for that. But no, knowing a dog, having a dog for a pet, living with a dog, and so on. I should have used a cat. That would be a better example. <laughs> I like cats a lot more. Living with a cat is a whole different experience than simply knowing about cats. So if I say the word cat, it means I'm thinking of a cat, and I've encoded that thought in a word. Now, I'm going to speak that word, cat. It goes across to you. You hear it in your ear. And it goes into your brain. And you decode it into what you know of cats. Into your experience of cats. Your experience might be completely different from mine. Maybe you had some mangy old alley cat <laughs> who gave you fleas. Huh? I have a pet lion. <laughs> So my different, my different experience of cats is going to give me a completely different idea. And when I say cat, the general word cat, that gives me a different impression, a different idea, a different concept than a person who only knows house cats, for example. Uh, or uh, one time in India, I ran into a wild cat in the mountains. Now, this is a cat, but it's not like a cat that most people know. So my idea of cats is probably a lot bigger than most people's idea of cats. My experience with cats is a lot bigger than most people's experience too. So when I say cat, I have a different meaning than most people will have when they decode that word into their own experience. So that's why we need to make such detailed explanations of everything. Because every single word we use is defined in a particular way according to our intentions. And in order for you to get what we're talking about, the same idea has to come up in your mind when you decode what we say. 
That means we have to qualify everything. We have to be very careful about the words we use so that you can get the exact same idea that we have. This is called duplication. And it is the principle of communication that we use to impart this teaching.